Hi guys, my name is Tom and in this video I'm going to show you a test that I did with five of these filters that I got from NISI. Now they did send me these filters and they paid me to do this video but they didn't pay for my opinion and in fact specifically I asked them, I said can I be brutally honest and really say what I think of your filters uh, in case I don't like them and all that stuff and they said yeah just test it out let us know what you think. So uh, the five filters that I've got are, well, there's two of them are ND filters. And these are IR NDs. If you don't know what that means, means uh, they block the infrared light. So some cameras tend to have, well, all cameras in a way tend to have some infrared light pollution. It just really depends on, you know, different camera sensors or, or uh, different filters in front of it uh, deal with it better. Uh, it becomes really evident when you start blacking the light with ND filters that basically black only the, well, most of them black only the visible light and, but they still let in the infrared light, which then basically means that the, the more NDs you stack or the more light, regular light you black in, uh, then the more the infrared light is going to be visible on the sensor and it basically turns your image red. Uh, so definitely if your camera suffers from that problem, like for example, the Blackmagic Ursa cameras that I've sort of, I've done a video about it before, uh, it has a really big problem with that. But all, like I said, pretty much every camera suffers to it to some degree. Definitely you want to look into getting uh, uh, IR ND filters uh, or get like a sort of a hat mirror or some kind of an IR filter in front of your ND filters. Uh, but anyway, so I've got two of these. These are uh, 1.2 and 0 0.9. So I'll show you guys uh, basically just how the color shifts or doesn't shift with these filters. Uh, two other filters I got from them are uh, basically what I would call sort of effects filters. They basically soften your image. So instead of putting, I don't know, back in the day people would put lens stockings or Vaseline or things like that in front of the, the lens. Well, right now uh, you can get like, for example, a Tiffin uh, you know, diffusion filters, which I actually compared this to one of them. Uh, but these ones are, uh, there's two different versions over there in a quarter strength. Uh, and these are the Allure Mist Black and then the white version. Uh, so you'll see sort of how they soften the image and kind of what they do to it. Uh, these filters are mainly meant to kind of, I would say, take away a bit of that digital look, you know, that, that digital sharpness, that edge. Uh, by softening the image a little bit. Like it doesn't really make it look like it's out of focus. It's supposed to sort of, it, it will usually adds a little glow to the highlights and things like that, decreases the, the contrast. So I'll show you guys how that looks. And then uh, they also send in uh, their uh, circular polarizer, which what I do like about this uh, is that it's just solidly built. I mean, they're all their filters, they're actual glass filters. They're pretty thick and heavy, so keep that in mind. Um, so you definitely won't need like a full-size professional mat box to mount them in. Uh, but uh, what's cool about their circular polarizer is that it will still fit into a regular basically uh, slot for your, your filters. But it already in it has this really nice sort of a thumb wheel uh, that you can use to basically rotate here the, uh, the, the circular pol polarizer. And as you rotate it, obviously it will black the reflections of different light at different angles. Again, for those of you who don't know what a polarizer filter does, it basically just blacks certain light coming in at a certain angle. Uh, so you can basically use it to stop reflections, whether it's uh, reflections you know, of, of an actual mirror or, or a piece of glass, like if you're filming, for example, a scene in a car uh, and, and the, the camera is outside of the, the windshield and you want to be actually be able to see through the windshield. Now, the best way for me to actually show you guys and explain all the stuff that I got after doing these various tests is uh, actually jumping on my computer and showing you each shot and kind of the breakdown of what happens with these filters. So first, here's a shot of my beautiful wife and this one has no filters on it. So you guys can kind of see, I'm going to zoom in, this is 200%. Uh, so you guys can see basically the uh, the color chart. So you can kind of see how the blacks here, you know, behave when I start applying the the ND filters, the IR ND filters, because like I said, if, if there wasn't, you know, uh, cutting the IR light, then the higher the ND filter, the more basically r red light pollution would, would be in there. So you'd start seeing the blacks, especially start turning a little bit reddish and the same thing with her hair. So anyways, this is how the shot looks. Uh, without the filter. 
now let's jump in here so this one the first one is the 0 0.9 one uh, if you guys want to see the exact camera settings you can kind of go back there pause the video and you can kind of see how that looks but let's go back here and actually look at the the color chart so i'll jump into the color panel and yeah this is how it looks so if we were to just simply compare this to this one which is no filter uh you can kind of if, you know you'll notice right away the depth of field obviously that that's one change that happens simply because i need to open the lens more the aperture to get more light with each nd filter so that that changes but obviously ignore that we're just looking at colors and now to better judge the colors i'm basically here put in the the parade so you can kind of see the red green and blue channels and you can see what happens to them so again this is the shot without any filters this is how it looks and here's with the 0 0.9 nd so here it is so look at kind of the changes that happen here so again go back here and go back to this one and as you'll notice pretty much no change happens i mean it's you're getting the exact same exposure on all the channels they're not really shifted i mean you know like i said uh, the shot is always slightly different because our model is moving here uh, but uh, but you'll notice basically the levels especially like the, the the peaks and then the shadows and all the channels pay attention to that and then even like the midtones you'll see that they basically stay the same uh, and then this can be verified even more once we zoom in so this is the shot that zoomed in so you can kind of again pay attention here to this card uh the the black one you know or here for example the grays look at you know the hair uh, and again let's look at here the close-up without the filter so back and forth you can see this is how it looks look at the the parade here exactly the same no difference so that this is the 0 0.9 now let's jump into the nd 1.2 so even stronger and again we'll compare sort of the white shot of this uh, this one with the filter applied and this is without it so that's one thing you know that i noticed right away is that it is pretty consistent with the colors it's just, it does a very good job right uh, so and like I said, why would you want to use an ND filter? Well, if you're outside and you want to be able to get that shallow depth of field, but you have too much light, you gotta get rid of that light. And ND filters is one way of doing it. Uh, so let's jump in here to the 200% zoom, and we can again see the the parade how it looks, and compare that to the one with no filter. So again, pretty much identical. You'll notice here. All right no change and uh, and you know visually obviously you can judge it by again looking at uh, the color card here looking at her hair uh, or even look at the, the gray there uh, the band there on on the hat you'll notice again this is without the uh, uh, filter and this is with the filter applied so it actually does a pretty dang good job uh, i gotta say um, definitely i'm not seeing anything that uh again that, that I would make me worry so now one way of judging filters is also how well are the the little elements the crystals that are within the glass kind of spaced out because this was shot on a 50 millimeter lens now let's jump into the close-up sort of test that I did and these ones were done with an 85 millimeter so the more you're going to zoom in with your lens the more you're going to pick up little imperfections in the filter so that can introduce softness to image things like that other artifacts so uh, let's look at it so this one is again no filter this is how it looks again you guys can look at the parade kind of judge it over there that way oh, here we have it the shot again zoomed in 200 percent so you'll be able to see for example like here on the edges how again the sharpness if it's affected and things like that uh, and then the you know here on the rgb parade you can really see basically how the levels behave and all that stuff and in each of the channels so first we have the irnd 0.9 filter applied and this is how that shot looks so you can compare it uh, to the one with no filter so this is that one now obviously the light was changing as i was filming this outside so there are shadows moving things like that but um but otherwise yeah it's the same so looking again at the rgb parade this is how it is so this is with the 0.9 filter applied uh, this is the clear one and as you'll notice like especially look at for example uh, here this here that's the black levels right 
and you'll notice here on the left side it gets a bit darker because th this part of it you know obviously got is in the shadow basically uh, but look at the right side here uh, and all the channels you'll notice basically in the here in the one version with uh, without any filters you'll notice where it is and now pay attention to the one here you'll notice it is virtually identical so that, that has not shifted at all uh, again and you know that's the key thing that we're, we're looking for when we're testing these uh, nd filters uh, and then you know in the close-up for example this is the one without any filters uh, and this is the one with the 0 0.9 applied so again look at the rgb here parade like basically where the channels are uh, on the darker end of the spectrum and how they look basically with the version with no filter and again you'll notice it is pretty much identical <laughs> there you see i guess i look at that level there it does not change so uh, and, and you can you know, again confirm that just by looking at this now that the sharpness really changed this is zoomed in at 200 percent this is how the sharpness looks here so this is the version without any filters zoomed in at 200 percent and this is the sharpness you know with um, the 0 0.9 filter even though i had to open the lens up so obviously that will affect sharpness because the aperture is wider a little bit but you'll notice is really you know there at the point where it was focused it makes no difference uh, so now let's look at the test with 1.2 uh, irnd and again comparing that you know this is how it looks basically in the full frame version uh, again look at the levels there and this is how it looks compared to the no filter version so again very very similar you'll notice the, the levels don't change much no filter and this one's with the filter uh, and then now in the close-up uh, this is how it looks and going there so again you'll notice that the black basically levels in each of the, the channels are identical here on, on the right side like i said the left side effect is affected because of the shadow but uh, there you can see we have that shadow but otherwise yeah it's it's identical there so yeah the filters do a really good job and again they keep their sharpness and all that stuff uh, so all right now let's jump into the other filters which are the effects filters so the first shot here that i got is the one um basically again with no filter so this is how it looks the shot you guys can kind of judge it for yourself now in this shot what i was kind of looking for is uh, basically how it handles the extreme contrast so that's why i did it at night so you'll see like this and a string lights there and behind there and there are also these reflections moving in the water there in the pool um, and then you know like even this kind of really obnoxiously obvious edge light with the blue lighting uh, against the black kind of you know seeing how that is affected by the by the filter so anyways this is how it looks there now let's zoom in 200 percent so 200 percent this is how it looks again pay attention to the the rgb parade um, anyways this is no filter now let's jump in here uh, to the first version which is the the allure mist the black version they're, they're all going to be a quarter strength there's different strengths you can get um, so this is the white shot and now we're going to jump into the one version with no filter and now again compare that to the version here with the filter applied so is there a difference well first thing i can tell you that i noticed and it's even more evident in the daylight uh, shots that i did uh is that it does basically well it decreases the the contrast so i mean which you kind of want these filters to do that so you'll notice like the highlights get kind of pulled down and stuff like that this is again no filter and this is the filter so you see it kind of pulls the the contrast down uh because that's essentially what it's doing it's kind of reducing the contrast you know kind of softening your highlights so because of that the highlights are not as uh, blown out uh but even with the shadows you'll notice in the daylight shots the shadows get really pulled up too so um again that that makes a difference so uh so anyways that's how, that's the first thing that it does and it also changes the you know slightly kind of the highlights you'll notice whether it's here on her skin or like those lights it adds like a slight little glow around the highlights essentially is, is what it does so you'll notice it kind of increases a bit more again this is with the filter now 
let's look at here like zoomed in 200% so I'll get that this is with the filter applied and there's no filter and filter applied again and again no filter so kind of you guys can compare it so definitely here you see the RGB parade, the contrast is brought down and you can kind of see that too, like the, the black areas are a bit more washed out. Uh, uh, but mainly here you'll notice the highlights, so whether it's this or the lights are a little bit, you know, not as basically strong uh, as they are in the no filter version, which is this one. Now let's look at the other filter, which is the Allure Mist white version. And it's the same strength, quarter strength. Uh, this is how it looks, the white shot. And now we'll kind of compare it here to this version. So that this is without the filter. And again, this one. Now, I don't know if you're seeing this, but the contrast is even more brought down. Uh, and you'll notice, like, for example, here, that glow from that light that kind of goes over her hand, kind of goes, you know, these little lights affecting more, like, kind of over the shoulder. And here, when we zoom in, uh, let's look at that again. This is no filter and this is with the filter. I kind of wanted to show you quickly a test here with the Tiffin Black Pro Mist filter because it's a, simply one of the more popular filters so, uh, that people use out there. So if you've been using it or you, had, you, know, you own it or whatever and you're kind of wondering how these compare. So anyways, this is the Tiffin Black Pro Mist and it's also the quarter strength. This is how the Tiffin Black Pro Mist looks and let's compare it for example to this one which is the Allure mist white version and we can also compare it here to the allure mist but the black version and i'll comparing it to the tiffin this is how it looks and they're actually to be honest very very similar right even like looking at the rgb parade and stuff like that if we look at the close-up you'll kind of notice the same thing all right now let's jump into the daylight shots here so again this is the version without the filter and now let's jump into the Allure Mist and this is the white version. So it's comparing the white version, this is how it looks. So right away you'll notice, especially in the daylight shots, it kind of, again, it washes out the shot. That's why the contrast here you'll notice is drastically reduced. So the blacks actually are lifted and the highlights are kind of brought down. So again, this is no version, no filter. Uh, you'll see how the highlights behave, but definitely here in the, in the red channel, you see uh, the, the, basically the blacks already extending. Uh, and now let's compare it to this one. You'll see this is with the Allure Mist White. So you see how that brought it up. And again, this is no filter. And now this is the filter version. So this is how it looks. But now let's go here on the close up to the black version. So this is the black version. Look how, especially her hair, starts getting a lot of that red kind of tension to it. And here also the, the black basically checker uh, on the color ch uh, chart. And also just pay attention to what's happening here. You'll notice that the black levels basically in the red channel are really lifted up. Uh, so again, this is no filter. And this is with the, the Allure Mist black version. So it's even more than if you compare it to the white one. See, the white one is affected, but it's very tiny. With the black one, look at the difference. So definitely reduces the contrast a lot more like this is the white shot and comparing it to the white shot without any filters you notice the contrast in the hair and the checkerboard it's very sharp right these filters really reduce that so kind of give you a bit of a softer image without making it look like it's out of focus like everything is still sharp but uh, it does also introduce slight tinge there in the you know the redness kind of in the black things so that could be a problem i mean it's not you know th this you could say pollution this red channel pollution is noticeable so you definitely got to be aware of it um you can kind of fight it a little bit especially in post-production by adjusting the colors so i don't think it's the end of the world but it is something to be aware of uh, now again that is really only evident or, or a problem when you're really in bright kind of settings and when you're using the allure mist black version on the white version uh, again it doesn't really seem to be as big of a problem like you see there now let's look at the close-up so again no filter this is the close-up here uh, with our little setting and uh, now let's compare that to the 
So the Allure Mist white version with uh, here in the in the close-up shot and it is without it. So you'll notice, yeah, the contrast definitely is brought down. Um, and um, but but again, the blacks aren't really affected there. They're they're nice and black basically. They're nice and crisp still. Uh, even in the close-up, you'll notice here, uh, or for example here, the version with no uh, filter on it. So sharpness is, you know, obviously affected because that's what these filters do. They add overall kind of glow to your shot, but the black levels are pretty good here. Let's now jump into the black version. So this is Allure Mist Black. And again, you'll notice that it is that black basically part is kind of losing its, its blackness, basically. This is the no filter version, nice and kind of crisp that black. And this one, it started getting kind of polluted a little bit there with that light. Now let's look at the circular polarizer. So uh, here I have a shot without the circular polarizer. So you just kind of pay attention to what happens in the trees there, especially in the shadows. Uh, and then the clouds, I mean, they're not really going to get affected, but it's all that haze, basically, all of that atmosphere, uh, especially here in Florida, like the, the, you know, there's just a lot of, especially now in the summer, there's so much moisture, you know, so much humidity in the air. So all those particles in the air, they kind of reflect and kind of block a lot of the light, uh, so that it gets affected. Uh, so here I am with the filter, basically circular polarizer applied. Now I did have to adjust the exposure and the reason is because the circular polarizers, that's just what happens with all circular polarizers, because they are darker, they're essentially kind of acting as an ND filter. So they'll take down this particular one will affect your exposure by two f-stops. So meaning you got to compensate two extra f-stops or you got to add two f-stops to your shot. Uh, so if you compare here, this shot, no filter, and then this shot, but with the filter, circular polarizer applied, and the, uh, the aperture kind of opened a little bit more, because so we're compensating for those two f-stops. Um, you'll notice that the, this is with basically just the first setting, because you obviously can rotate it. So this is with whatever, you know, the setting it was on. You'll notice that it doesn't affect really the sky here. Uh, you see, in this setting, it is a slight change, but not big but it does affect the red channel there in the, sh in the kind of green here, um, or the, in the shadows, basically. So you see, this is the no filter version, uh, you know, basically no filter, and this is in the shot on the Z cam. So there is some tiny little bit of their kind of the, the redness appearing. And with the circular polarizer, it actually cuts out that redness. So it makes the green kind of pop a little bit more. Now here's how it starts looking once I start basically rotating that filter. Uh, so as you rotate, you'll notice that uh, the sky basically changes, so it becomes slightly brighter. And you'll notice here especially, it's like really evident, so it's very nice and bright and basically blue. And that's kind of where sometimes a circular polarizer is going to be very handy, uh, where it's going to allow you to kind of really control the look of that sky, whether you want it to be more dramatic and kind of darker or you want those colors more to pop. Uh, you know, that's where circular polarizers just on the sky alone can make a big difference. Um, now, obviously, if you're using it to cut down a reflection and glare, uh, then you can also do that. And here, for example, I have a shot which is just literally looking at the reflection here and the sliding door that I have in the backyard, looking at the pool. And you'll notice as I start rotating the circular polarizer, you'll see what happens. It starts kind of affecting reflections in certain parts of that window. Now, circular polarizers, because they cut down again, with light reflecting at different angles, it means that at a glass that's not perfectly perpendicular to the lens, it will not be able to cut out all of the reflections. But it allows you to, like let's say if there was somebody there behind that glass, which I, you know, in this case I don't have anybody there, then you'd be able to see them versus seeing those reflections, right? Uh, so that's the kind of cool thing about, you know, the, the, the circular polarizers. So can really, you can really kill the reflection or you can have it there visible. So it's, it's up to you and you can easily adjust that by just rotating the filter. Um, now, again, with this one, keep in mind that you're reducing the, um, the, you know, your light amount of light by two F steps. And here you can just kind of see how, you know, I, in this shot, basically I use the circular polarizer to kind of cut down some of those white reflections in the pool so that the pool just looks nicer, kind of more vibrant colors and nice blue. Um, you know, because without it, it just looked a little bit more blend. So anyways, that's, that's how the, the shot looks.
So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, you got something out of it uh, and it kind of helps you make up your mind in case you were looking into investing into sort of higher end filters or glass filters uh, for your next production, whether you should go with NISI or maybe some other company. Uh, just, you know, for those of you who are curious, this is how, you know, the filters actually look. So they are actually made of glass and they're pretty thick actually, uh, pretty sturdy. Oh, and one more thing, uh, they did also send me this, which I haven't really used it because I don't have a need for it, uh, or at least I haven't had a need for it so far. But basically it's a, it's a little case for your filters. I do have another filter holder that I've been using for many, many years that I've been really happy with. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't get a chance to use this or didn't really need to use it. But in case you're wondering, uh, it is nice and sturdy. We'll hold all of your filters here. Uh, and it's, um, you know, it's padded inside, so the filters are going to be protected. It's kind of a, you know, pretty rigid uh, kind of a shell outside. Now, one thing I did notice about this filter holder that maybe I'm not a big fan of is that it does not come with a little belt clip in the back or some, some way to kind of attach it to your belt because not always, but sometimes I do like to basically put my uh, filter pouch kind of and attach it, just have it hanging off my belt as I'm walking around on set. I always have easy access uh, to my filters. Uh, so NISI, if you're listening, that might be a, a nice little upgrade for this uh, already, you know, nicely built uh, lens filter holder. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you guys uh, head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com where you'll be able to see a whole bunch of other filmmaking gear reviews, tutorials and stuff like that. Uh, but also let me know in the comments below and, uh, you know, like, share, all that stuff with this video. Uh, if you did like it, if you didn't like it, also the same, just let me know. Uh, and, uh, you know, or let me know basically what you guys think of these filters too. Whether you think they're a worthwhile investment. Now for all the latest prices and all that stuff, I don't mention them in the videos because they change constantly. So just, as always, click the links in the description. You'll be able to see that. Um, but anyways, that's it for this one. Thanks, bye.